So what software do instructional designers use? Well, it turns out we can use a lot of different types of software. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of describe some of the most popular basic types of software that we use. Obviously, this list um, that I'm going to describe is not extensive or exclusive. Um, you know, these are the main things that you should probably learn coming through, you know, a master's program in instructional design. Or if you want to say, you know, most of the software instructional designers use, these are the basic types of software. Um, I've broken this out into authoring software, video software, uh, document organization software, audio software, image editing software, and learning management systems. These are the basic things. And obviously, you know, you know how to use a computer and a mobile device and things of that nature. So I'm not really talking about hardware here. I'm just specifically talking about the basic software you know you should know. And, and I don't mean you have to know all of this, but these are basic software packages that, that we are expected to know how to use as an instructional designer, or at least understand them um, enough to kind of dabble in them or edit something in them if need be. All right, so for authoring software, the big software packages, there's two main ones, Articulate and Captivate. Articulate and Captivate, and I have a third one listed here, which is PowerPoint, um, because it is an authoring software and can be used for designing computer-based instruction. So Articulate and Captivate, think of PowerPoint on steroids. They're PowerPoint that is, you can actually make nice, really good interactive software with Articulate and Captivate. Um, both of these are competing with each other. Captivate's owned by Adobe and Articulate is its own company. Um, but And they both basically do the same thing. You know, you can create quizzes with them, lots of interactivity, lots of great things, you know, published to desktop and mobile devices. But you can, most training is created with one of these two pieces of software. Now, there is other software in the field out there that people are using, but these are the main two packages. You know, it's usually someone, they usually use one of these two. Um, so Articulate only works on, or only can be, developed in Windows. So Captivate has the advantage that it runs on both the Mac and PC. And then we all know PowerPoint, um, which is, you know, a lot, it doesn't do nearly as much as either of those two pieces of software, but it can be used and is used as a development tool for us for either for lectures, for, you know, things like that. I've, I've seen it used for computer based training, and it does work in some cases for that really well. Um, so we shouldn't dismiss PowerPoint. All right, so those are the three main authoring tools you know I like to see students have be able to use. Video, we don't do as much in video in instructional design as I feel we should, um, but I do think you should be able to use video software. Same with sound software. I don't think we do enough instructional design either with either of those two. Um, but three pieces of software I think are very vital for us to be able to use. One is Camtasia. Um, for screen recording and for making small, quick videos. Um, and then Adobe Premiere and Final Cut Pro. Those are both a lot more advanced than Camtasia or like iMovie or something, a movie maker. Um, but I think that they're very important for us to know how to use. Great pieces of software to learn. Um, for, you know, d developing different kinds of documents, like for formatting and organization and stuff, we have a few that we use. I think one of the biggest ones is Adobe InDesign. You know, we use that to make like our instructor guides, workbooks, things like that to really organize it, give it a good look and feel. And then obviously we have Microsoft Word, which we should all know how to use, but know how to use all the different features in it to really make something look nice. Like, can you just make a, you know, a flyer and things like that in it? And then we have Adobe Acrobat, which we should know how to edit, use, print things into like a Word document into Acrobat. Um, but those are the three pieces of software I like to see students know. For audio, I really, really, really like Audacity. You know, there's a lot of professional audio software out there, but I just can't find a reason to use anything else but Audacity because it's free and it's open source. You know, the other software, it costs money, so I, I, I just can't find a reason not to use it. Um, for images, image editing. I like Adobe Photoshop for editing JPEGs, Illustrator for creating logos and things like that. I, I really think, you know, image editing is a skill that everyone should have. I've used it in all my jobs. 
Um, even though I was never really a graphic artist, I've used it in all of my jobs. I've had to use Photoshop for various things. You know, so I, I make sure our students know Photoshop and Illustrator, but very useful pieces of software to know. And then finally, other pieces of software for development are learning management systems. I really think as an instructional designer now, you need to understand how to develop in a learning management system. It's pretty easy. Um, and once you learn one, it's, the rest are all pretty much the same. I have three listed here, Moodle, Blackboard, and Canvas, just because they're the most three common three you see in higher ed. But every company I've been at, every company I work with, every school has their own. Some have proprietary ones, but they all basically function the same. They all have a different development interface. It's about learning how to be an admin of the learning management system and develop in that environment. They're usually very easy to develop in, but you have to really learn the system. So here's my that's my list of software that i think you know is pretty basic for instructional designers i think this is a pretty solid foundation list um, i think it's a good starting point for you if you're trying to figure out you know what software should i learn as an instructional designer um, these are the you know the basic things i didn't talk about hardware here i'm not talking about programming instructional designers don't do a lot of programming but you know we do dabble in html html5 css javascript we don't really get into database languages or things like that unless we're really getting into development. You know, that's more computer science, not instructional design. Um, so this is a really good starting point for software instructional designers use. Oh, and if you're watching this video, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm creating this. Please look at the date of the video. You know, it's 2000. It's August of 2018. If you're looking at common software and with this video still up in like 2020, please be aware that this is going to change.